everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you wanted to join me today because today we are going to talk about some more advanced zero waste tips. Stuff that you can do if you already say no to straws, if you already carry a canvas bag, if you already have swapped out disposable plastic for a reusable water bottle, like this is the non-basic edition. This is going to be a little bit more advanced, it's going to be a little bit more time consuming. Generally I see that a lot of you have requested more elaborate things that you can do in order to lower your impact and I am there for that. So let's get into this. So the first thing you can do is something that happens in the kitchen. When we cook we throw out a lot of scraps like the stem from a broccoli or like the peel of an onion. A lot of this though have a lot of lot of flavor and you can actually still use it in your dishes. So what I do is that I save all my veggie scraps that can be reused. Everything from carrot peel, potato peels, onion peels, stuff with peels and stems, everything that you would normally throw away. I save that in a glass jar in my freezer. So whenever I need to make like a gravy or a sauce or a stew or anything I can use this broth as a, a flavor maker instead and after you've used it you can actually just compost it the thing that you do is you take your frozen veggie scraps you put them in water and you let them simmer for a couple of hours on the lowest heat possible and it will retract a lot a lot of flavor it's so Good. And it's a very waste-free tip because usually you buy those bouillon cubes or like veggie fonts or veggie bouillons and whatnot. I'm not there for it. So uh, this is not really that advanced. All it takes for you is an email or phone call. But a lot of people aren't aware that this is actually something that they themselves have the power to change. And that who supplies your energy. What comes out of our electrical sockets and what comes out of our radiators and everything has something to do with energy and power. And a lot of energy suppliers actually use fossil fuels. And we ain't there for that. Instead, you can switch to an energy supplier that utilizes renewable energy. It's super, super easy. Just go and Google, find out what local uh, opportunities you have. I know, for instance, in Denmark, we as consumers are completely free to choose which energy supplier that we want. And it's definitely something to look into because that has a huge impact on your overall carbon footprint. So the next tip is not me saying throw away in your entire wardrobe and buy new stuff, not at all, that's never the solution, but generally over a couple of years try to switch out from synthetic materials to natural fibers instead because those are way more sustainable also when it comes to getting rid of these materials they are way more sustainable as well as the production in general is also considered to be more sustainable. So stuff like organic cotton is way better than polyester because polyester retains microplastic as does all synthetic fibers. I only buy stuff secondhand with the exception of a couple of ethically and sustainably produced new products but I always 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 try to go for natural fibers rather than synthetic fibers and a problem here is that a lot of the newer trendy items and a lot of those on trend right now like the really short-lived trends are usually made really really poorly which means synthetic fibers but it also means that that's the products that we tend to go towards that tend to catch our eye because they are on trend right now so trying to go for more timeless pieces because those will usually be in natural fibers instead however when it comes to natural fibers don't go for conventionally mass-produced fibers like normal cotton conventional cotton actually is the world's largest consumer of pesticides so if you tend to go for new clothing go fair trade go ethically made and go organic that's so 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 important otherwise you contribute as a consumer sadly to the pollution of water systems and to poverty and to sweatshops it is just like it's so bad you guys just no I mentioned this just briefly a couple of minutes ago but composting Composting is one of those things that might seem very intimidating and a lot of people are turned off it if they don't have a yard, if they don't have a big house, if they live in a small apartment, if they live in a room in an apartment. But I promise you it can be done either way. You can easily find small compartments for composting and they are smell free and like odor free I guess is what it's called. Um, and it's such a good thing to have and to implement into your routine. You can use the dirt that you compost into fertilizer that you can use on your house plants and it's just all thumbs up from here. It's such a good idea. And I'm making a composting guide. It takes a lot of time for me to do this, so I am so sorry. But if you cannot wait for my composting guide, I know there are tons of other composting guides here on YouTube, so you can go and check them 
out. I've seen people talk about this a lot, but regrowing vegetables. You can actually just do this in your house, in your window. You don't need a garden, you don't need a big house, but taking vegetables that you would normally throw away and trying to regrow them. I've done this specifically with the spring onion. It's really, really easy. Just take the last bit of spring onion, usually has a little bit of root, and put it in water and put it in sunlight, and then it will regrow into more spring onion. I haven't bought spring onion in two months because I'm just using the same one over and over again because it keeps regrowing. And you can do this with a ton of stuff, like with fruit and with salad and with onions and with potatoes. It's really, really clever. And perhaps it's not like something that completely can sustain you for eternity, but it's something that's fun to do and you are saving something from landfill while you do it. Yeah! Then there is the question of how do you go to the toilet being zero waste? We need to rethink our toilet habits and generally how we go to the loo. Toilet paper might not be something that has the biggest carbon footprint in contrast to other products and in other industries, but it's still something to be mindful of. It's still something that you need to use mindfully. So instead of just, I see this, especially like my, my friends and stuff do this a lot and I, I am so bothered by it, but just take like a long strap of toilet paper while you maybe just needed one third of that. Doing that is something that is actually kind of basic, but it's still something that's good to do. A lot of people ask me though whether or not I use toilet paper, and yes I do, but I have found several different brands that do not wrap in plastic and then do not bleach and like process their toilet paper chemically, which is something that I'm there for. So I've used both Green Cane and Who Gives a Crap toilet paper. Um, and I will see if I can find the links and I will leave them down below if you're interested in that as well. One of the best things, however, that you can do to improve your toilet routine is getting a bidet attachment to your toilet. Some people also call it a bum gun, which I kind of love. I think it's amazing, but it's just this little shower like handle and then you just sort of wash yourself before you wipe yourself and that saves a lot of water and it also saves you a lot of paper. A thing that you as a consumer can start doing now already today is boycotting or reducing unsustainable products that we eat and we consume. Stuff like palm oil is in a ton of processed foods and palm oil production is directly linked to rainforest deforestation and destruction of habitat for tons of animals including the orangutan. It's so bad so whenever you want a like a quick snack try to look on the back of it and find something without any palm oil in it animal products is another thing that hello you can also reduce and just completely boycott altogether animal agriculture is the most unsustainable devastating polluting industry in the world it's absolutely insane the production of animal products is responsible for rainforest deforestation for water pollution and for plastic pollution and soy production a lot of soy i think it's 87 or 85 percent of all soy that we produce we produce in order to feed animals and where we plant the soy is places where we would usually have rainforest oh okay who here so boycotting animal products is so effective. It's so flippin' effective. And if you're nervous about how to go about it, I have so many videos about this, guys. I mean, you just hit me up, home slice. <laughs> and lastly, I just really want to mention avocados. I, when I go dumpster diving, I sometimes find avocados and then I eat them gladly. I love avocados, I think they taste amazing. But a lot of avocados are produced in Mexico, a, an industry that's actually controlled by the drug cartel. Crap. <laughs> Generally the problem with a lot of trendy food items like avocados is that all of a sudden the demand increases rapidly, which makes for a lot of increased production, which makes monocultures. And a monoculture is a place of land where there only grows one thing. And that's really, really bad for the surrounding ecosystems because that does not, that's not natural, that's not how nature usually works. And it has a devastating effect. So try to eat more local, try to eat more seasonal foods that grow locally near you instead of going for the always trendy, always like, like Instagram hyped products. E-waste is the quickest growing category of waste in 2019. Laptops and televisions and 
fridges and ovens and I mean I can just keep going. We buy this stuff all the time and we replace it whenever it's just a little bit broken or whenever a new model comes along and that's extremely bad. So a way to sort of counter this development is by going for secondhand electronics. There are tons of places where you can find secondhand cell phones, secondhand computers. All my stuff is secondhand like and it works just fine. A lot of shops actually repair and resell electronics secondhand with the same warranty as completely new products, so there's really nothing to lose there. With the production of electronics come a lot of bad industries, sadly, you guys. A single cell phone requires around 230 kilograms of raw materials like silver, aluminium, gold, and lithium. Like a lot of lot of materials go into making one cell phone. And sadly, none of this is mined with sophisticated machinery, but a lot of it is mined with children. To make stuff even more complicated, a lot of tech brands actually make their stuff in a plant obstinate scheme, which means that it's produced with an expiration date that at some point your piece of technology, your piece of electronic equipment is going to break in code. That's just how it's produced because it, it forces people to buy new stuff all the time, which is why your smartphones gradually become slower and slower and slower every time you update it. It's absolutely insane. And I think Shell Bizzle made an amazing video about plant obstolence that you should definitely go and watch. I'm probably going to be a little bit unpopular when I'm bringing this next point up, but stop binging stuff online. Stop streaming for hours and hours and hours. And there is some sort of irony in me saying that whilst you're watching this video. But seriously, it's not a human right to binge three hours of a TV show on one night. It's a luxury that we have but when we store stuff online, it goes somewhere. It just does not disappear up in a cloud and it takes a lot of energy, usually fossil fuels, to keep this data storage facilities going. And that's why streaming has a negative carbon footprint because that requires a lot of energy for you to be able to do that. So if you need to watch a show, if you really, really want to watch a show, see if you can find a couple of friends who want to watch it with you. So you are not each watching it on each individual computer, but instead watching it together. When I need like a really nice cozy night, I sometimes go for like a online service where I can stream an episode of something. But usually when I'm at home, I just watch one of my old DVDs. Still don't see any evidence that buying DVDs in cases is more sustainable than streaming. I don't think it is, but if you already have DVDs or if there is a DVD in a thrift shop that you really want to watch, then buy that and watch that instead of streaming it online because that's a really neat way to go about it. And lastly, a very advanced thing or something that a lot of people are turned off by or some of the things that I can see like in the sustainability spectrum, a lot of people save for last, but stop flying. It seems like a very simple, easy thing to say, but there's a lot that goes into it and I'm definitely aware that it's not an option for everybody. But what we do need to, or what we can all do, is stop flying to short distance. Because short distance flights, to my knowledge, is actually the most unsustainable thing that you can do. Some places are very, very hard to reach without plane travel. But if you're planning a vacation, try to plan something that's more local, something that you can do on a bus or on a train. And plan your trips, even work trips, so you can do them without plane travel. I do this every single day. Um, I get a lot of options to go to Germany or to Sweden or to Norway or to Copenhagen and all of these places are uh, at minimum five, six hours away. And I plan my trips in a way that it makes it possible for me to just go by train or go by bike. I was about to say that's really ambitious. I go by bus instead. And it works out so well. You get a lot of free time to do your work or to like, it's, it's, it's gifted time that you give yourself. And I think that's really, really important. So trying to step out of this convenience zone, this, it only needs to be good and, and convenient for me and try to look at the bigger picture and try to inconvenience yourself just a little bit in your everyday life because it makes a huge difference that you do some of this stuff and down the line you're not going to think about it as an inconvenience it's a sacrifice that you're willing to make because it makes you feel really really good that you're doing something else and you're doing something for other people than yourself wow that sounded preachy <laughs> But in all fairness, for me, it has made me a more positive and a happier person to live more sustainably and to do things more sustainably, even though it's harder for me, even though I'm inconveniencing myself sometimes. But I think it's genuinely worth it.
So I hope that you got something out of this video. I hope that at least one or two of these things you're going to go home and do right now. I would love that. Otherwise, tell me down below what kind of initiatives or what kind of sustainability actions that you're taking. I would love to know. Have a really great day and take good care of yourselves and see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!